and stuff like that. And we really didn't get to travel much, but usually my friends and I, when anytime somebody has a birthday, they kind of celebrate it for a week or a month. So I figured I might as well stay in line and I want to preach to you on the subject this morning. I'm still on Christmas. That's okay with me. I know it's January 2nd. I know we are moving into the new year, right? But I'm still on Christmas. And let me explain that to you as I move forward. I'm still on Christmas. Mm. I see some faces like, okay, I ain't gonna work this out. <laughs> Still, I'm still on Christmas. It is. Well, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you, uh, just asking uh, for you to let your anointing rest on us. Oh, yes. Oh, this yes. is your house, so we know you're already here. But you did say that when two or three are gathered together in your name, it will be in the midst of us. Thank you. So now, not only are you not only here, but now you are engaging. And with that engagement comes healing, with that engagement comes comfort, with that engagement comes enlightenment, with that engagement comes relationship. And so we thank you. So let me step back and let the preacher show up. Let them hear uh, my voice, but let them see my face, but see your face. Let, let me talk, but let them hear your voice. And we believe that we'll be empowered. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hmm. It is January 2nd, 2022, and we are transitioning from Christmas to the new year and all of its possibilities. While I have plans for the new year, I'm not quite ready to transfer my energy from celebration to contemplation. Mm -hmm. While I do plan and anticipate all of the great things that God has for me in 2022, I simply wish to just keep in mind that the reason behind all of this is the birth of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm still on Christmas. All right. All right. This birth that we have celebrated a week ago is not a celebratory event in and of itself. We are celebrating what it represents. Right Through the salvific efforts of Jesus Christ, one, we have been reconciled back to God. Yes. Right, Paul says in Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand. Uh, number two, uh, the holiday season represents empowerment. To carry out God's plan in our lives and that of humanity. Stay with me. Speaking about birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul speaks of Adam's sin and the remedy that the birth of Jesus brought to fruition. He says in Romans 5, 18 and 19, Therefore, as by one offense of one, uh, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift, came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. And so Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ, not only saves me from condemnation, it does not only give me access to eternal life, but it empowers me to carry the purpose God has given me while I walk in this life. I'm walking into 2022, and I need to be empowered. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. That empowerment leaves me in a state of exuberance. Mm -hmm. For I am aware going into 2022 that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yes. So while I celebrate his birthday and I prepare for this new year, what I am really celebrating is the empowerment it represents as I walk through this next chapter in my life. I'll get into 2022 in a minute, but I'm still on Christmas. Mm, when I hear the many comments about me today, I am proud of my achievements. I am educated, experienced, and accomplished. I'm even halfway good looking. Come on, somebody, help me out here. Right? But, but, but what I need you to understand it is that it has not always been like this for me. I, I was part of the AIDS, part of the crack generation, part of the cocaine generation. I was a drug 
abuser, right? I had difficulty committing to long-term work. I was irresponsible, careless, always depressed and angry. But when I accepted Jesus Christ into my life, not only was I saved, but I was also empowered, right? Whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is you have had to deal with, whatever your story or your circumstances is, when you met Jesus and you opened up your heart and let him come in, he not only saved you and sanctified you and filled you with the Holy Ghost, but he empowered you. You became able to do things you once thought you could not do. You became empowered. Love saved you. But he granted you eternal life. But you also given the tools to accomplish the purpose in your life. Am I the only one who's willing to be transparent and talk about the guy I was before Jesus Christ and the struggles that I even had after? Am I the only one who's open to say that I wasn't always at my best? Am I the only one open to say that sometimes I took a right when I should have took a left? Or sometimes I went straight when I should have backed up? Or, or am I the only one? story of God's goodness in my life. Oh, uh, we're going to get to 2022 in a minute, but I'm still on Christmas. Yeah. If you do not go into 2022 understanding your empowerment, uh, then your New Year's resolution will simply become like so many other resolutions. They simply become conversations with the weight of another lost testimony and the hopes of a maybe next year. Many of us have seen so many hopeful resolutions go to the wayside. We are not even daring enough to put God to the test. We go into the new year praying and hoping for the best instead of expecting yes, yes. the best. Yeah. But because of the birth of Jesus Christ, because of this Christmas season, because of what he started, because he began something new, I'm empowered to do things that I could not do before I met him. I'm empowered to change. I'm empowered to impact. I'm empowered to impart. I'm empowered to inspire. I'm empowered to influence. I am empowered to stimulate and motivate. I am empowered to grow. I am empowered to apprehend that which has already apprehended me. Paul would tell the Philippians in 3.12, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after in that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of. The new king, King James Version, changes it a little bit. He says, not that I have already attained or am already perfect, but I press on that I may hold that for which Jesus Christ has hold of. Uh, 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 because, because 
future. <laughs> when you see me go through and accomplish the ordained path God has given me, you're going to ask me the same question King Nebuchadnezzar asked Daniel and the two Hebrew boys when they came out of the fiery furnace unharmed by the heat. The king said, I put three of you in the furnace, but when I looked in it, I saw four people yeah. walking around. Oh, I don't know if you hear me. Uh, 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 so I do not feel the need to go into the war room to plan for battle. I'm spending time in the prayer room so I'm able to withstand the heat. The king had said, we're going to play these harps and, and instruments and everybody that doesn't bow down to it, we're going to toss them in the fiery furnace. And Daniel and his boys said, we're not bowing down. And the king said, if you don't bow down, we're going to toss you in the furnace and let's see if God can deliver you. They said, well, we don't know what he's going to do, but we're going to stand and go in anyway. And so what David, I mean, what Daniel is teaching me right now is why many of you are getting your swords and your shields and while many of you were trying to strategize on, on how to kill and destroy. I am not getting ready for battle. I'm getting warmed up to stand the heat. Oh, I don't need to talk about you when you talk about me. I don't need to lie on you when you lie on me. I don't need to gossip on you when you gossip on me. I don't Oh, 
hearted, to preach the limits of the captive, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. When Jesus comes out of the wilderness, he goes down into the synagogue and they pass him the book and he opens up the scrolls to Isaiah 61. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is a He's talking about the captive, right? The spirit of the Lord has empowered me, right? It has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus came out of the wilderness empowered to fill his destiny. I'm going to stop here for a minute because I feel myself. I know they say things are going backwards, but I feel myself coming out of the covert wilderness. Inspire next generation leadership, not only to 
Get up. 